the Antichrist and his new world order in the end times. End time prophecies and instructions from Jesus through Berta Dude. Is the Antichrist a person or an anti-Christian principle? On one hand, the term Antichrist describes Satan's efforts against God, that is, Jesus Christ, his teachings, and against Christians in general, ever since the death of Jesus. On the other hand, it also describes a ruler during the end times, who is possessed by Satan to such a large degree that he acts in complete accordance with his will exercising his power to further Satan's goals. In a sense, all individuals who follow Satan and act according to his will are antichrists. When will the antichrist appear in person? The end-time antichrist will appear immediately after the catastrophe from the cosmos. He will gain global influence and power through his promise to provide help, salvation, and order during that time of greatest need and chaos. This corresponds to the goal of the strategists of the New World Order, from chaos to order. Even before the end-time catastrophe from the cosmos, Islam, with its false god Allah, proves to be a manifestation of Satan through its rampage against God, Jesus Jehovah, Lord of Hosts, and against all Christians. This large-scale persecution by Satan through Islam will be continued in an even worse manner by the end-time Antichrist, shortly after the catastrophe from the cosmos, and all surviving believers will be targeted. What characteristics and behaviors will the Antichrist exhibit? An appealing appearance, pomp, great willpower and eloquence, sophisticated dissimulation, occult gifts and promises of material well-being belied a true hard-hearted, relentless and ruthless nature of the Antichrist, enabling him to gain worldwide power, new world order. How will the Antichrist hide his true nature? The Antichrist will be a master of dissimulation, lies, misdirection, deception and profiteering. Occult gifts will support him. He will appear under the guise of someone who can return order, someone pious, empathetic, a veritable bringer of salvation, a helper and savior. However, thanks to his lovelessness, arrogance, lust for power, lies, greed for profit, and occult abilities, he will be easy to see through. By what means will the Antichrist gather his followers? Chaos and distress due to the catastrophe from the cosmos, promises of the Antichrist for restoration of order and a quick recovery of earthly goods and prosperity. All of these are ideal conditions for the Antichrist to gain followers worldwide, thereby establishing his New World Order after the natural catastrophe. The spiritual blindness of the population and his occult abilities will help him in this endeavor. How can Satan's actions within the Antichrist be recognized? With the person of the Antichrist, Satan will possess a pawn occupying an adversarial position against God, that is, Jesus. With this, Satan will be able to work thoroughly against God, that is, Jesus Christ, his teachings, Christians, and all faith and righteousness. The spiritually blind followers of the Antichrist will not see through Satan's actions within him. In this respect, they will support Satan and, therefore, also be possessed by him and his demons. Only convinced and true Christians will recognize his possession by Satan.
how will the people of the world view and judge this person? The followers of the Antichrist will obey him blindly. They will even see the Messiah in him, who will bring help and salvation. They will cheer, worship, and idolize him. In this respect, his followers will unmistakably practice idolatry. What strategy will he use against believers? Under the guise of the pious one and the bringer of salvation, the Antichrist will first expand his world domination for about three years with a lot of cunning and violence. In this endeavor, a gullible and naive Christians will support him as well. Afterwards, he will implement his actual plans inconspicuously. Since he will only act against individual denominations in the beginning, he will win over other denominations in the process, who see this as an opportunity to weaken and dispose of their denominational opponents. But in the end, the Antichrist and his helpers wish to fight and destroy all denominations, every belief in a god, and most vehemently and consistently, all Christians. What goals will the Antichrist strive for? The Antichrist will pursue all the goals that Satan has pursued ever since his rebellion against God, that is, Jesus, his order, and followers. He will deny a God of love. He will present Jesus Christ as a non-existent fantasy figure, his work of redemption as unbelievable, and he will fight Jesus and the Christian teachings, labeling them a spiritual enemy. He will put himself in God's place and let himself be worshipped. With cunning, threats of violence and force, he will attempt to remove every belief in a God from the people. He will reject everything supernatural and not certifiable as non-existent. He will easily topple the more often merely nominal Christian belief in Jesus and his teachings throughout Christian denominations with rational arguments and by sowing doubts thereby devaluing brotherly love as a weakness. He will cause discord, strife, turmoil, and hatred among the people, stifling any leftover love. How will the Antichrist deal with Christians? The Antichrist will hatefully and brutally persecute Christians. This possess them and put them in material and spiritual distress. He will take away their shelters and deprive them of every means of livelihood. Finally, he will want to kill them all. Only his followers will have the right to live. Christians will not. On the other hand, his accomplices in the fight against Christians and apostates will be royally rewarded. These typically satanic practices and goals against Christians are also implemented by Muslims, whose god Allah thereby exposes himself as Satan under this cover name. These goals of autocracy and power over everything, as well as the behavior of the Antichrist, will resemble or even surpass the goals and practices that the thoroughly anti-Christian Islam has been pursuing and practicing for 1,400 years. For instance, coercion to renounce faith in Jesus, most brutal persecution, disenfranchisement, dispossession, and even death. Will the Antichrist generally persecute every spiritual aspiration and action? First and foremost, he will suppress every kind of faith and spiritually minded thought and aspiration in order to completely secularize people. What is the actual time of tribulation and distress? The actual time of tribulation and distress mentioned several times in the Bible will last about seven years, ending with the rapture of the faithful during the coming of Jesus and the subsequent destruction of the persecutors. It is characterized by extreme distress of Christians due to the myriad of brutal and hellish practices used against them to turn them away from faith in God, that is, 
Jesus Christ. Jackie, Rapture, a quick side note here. As Jesus has promised through Timothy, trumpet call of God, and through Sister Claire, heart dwellers, there will be a rapture of the first harvest right before this cosmic event occurs. How should Christians work against the goals of the Antichrist? With all the strength they can muster, Christians must resist these satanic strategies and goals, work against them and not give in to them. They must fight with fervor, but with weapons of love. What help will Christians receive from Jesus? Even if the situation for Christians may seem hopeless on the outside, they will supernaturally receive strength, comfort, hope, support, argumentation, and survival help from Jesus, and in many ways, even in a material way. Will the Antichrist defeat the Christians? Satan, through the Antichrist, will succeed in turning many Christians away from faith, but he will not defeat or destroy the faithful and steadfast core group of true Christians thanks to the guidance and protection of Jesus and his angels. Believers know that the Antichrist will perish and that Satan will be bound again through the imminent final judgment, brought about by the followers of the Antichrist. Why does God allow the Antichrist to rise in the first place? Many Christians consider themselves to be orthodox. Through this test of faith, they will have to prove how genuine, well-founded, and strong their faith really is. Satan, the Antichrist, and his followers will be allowed to unfold, thereby filling their cup of evil to the brim before God, that is, Jesus and his believers. Through irresponsible experiments in the deep, they will scorch the Earth's surface with magma eruptions and cause earth fissures, preparing their own judgment and death in the process. By what means will the Antichrist and his new world order perish? Before the Antichrist can destroy all faithful Christians, he and his followers will bring about their own end. Through experiments deep within the Earth, atomic chain reactions will split the Earth, magma will spill onto the surface, and the atmosphere will ignite. In a global sea of fire, the entire surface of the Earth will be destroyed, all the way down to great depth. The followers of the Antichrist will be banished into matter for a long time. Battle of Faith by the Antichrist and New World Order Followers Why will religious tolerance suddenly change after the catastrophe from the cosmos? After the catastrophe from the cosmos wreaks havoc worldwide, God will be accused of having allowed such a thing to happen. Based on this, an increasingly worsening battle of faith will take place against all Christians. What is the reason and purpose of allowing the disputes between different ideologies? Only through voluntary or forced arguments between different denominations, of which each one thinks to be the only true one, can a personal and firm viewpoint grow. Therefore, during this last battle of faith, before the end of mankind, such disputes will be allowed to occur. They will force a decision for or against Jesus and his teachings to be made. Who will remain steadfast and faithful to Jesus? And who will not? With the current spiritual low of many church members, 
even many nominal Christians, will altogether part ways with faith, because they lack a genuine and secure foundation of faith, as well as a firm conviction of the truth as Jesus has taught it. How important is trust in Jesus' guidance and an intimate connection to him? The disciples of Jesus must confidently let themselves be guided by Jesus, regard everything as his guidance, always long for his closeness, and join him more and more in an intimate manner. Then, they need not to be afraid. When will the battle of faith fully flare up? Approximately three years after the disaster from the cosmos, the actual tribulation and persecution period by the Antichrist and his followers against the Christians will commence. Missionary work will be forbidden, and action will be taken, with great severity, against everything that is considered to be a work for Jesus and his kingdom. What should Christians watch out for during the battle of faith? Christians must pay attention to the messengers of Jesus, follow their true teachings, and join them, so that a small, mutually strengthening community can come into being. People who give in to the pressure and desires of the Antichrist and his followers for worldly and material reasons must be made aware of the worthlessness of earthly goods and the imminent demise of the Antichrist and his followers. How can the ministering process continue during the prohibition of speech and ministry? Christians must stay far away from Satan's followers and avoid arguments during the persecution period. They must consolidate their faith, work in silence, and serve Jesus through words and deeds. After the prohibition of preaching and the initiation of persecutions have been issued, Jesus' servants are to withdraw wisely, so as not to endanger or destroy what they have achieved up to that point. Nevertheless, in total commitment, Jesus' teachings, will, and name must continue to be boldly, gently, wisely, and carefully made known to the peoples of the world. Christians are not to shun the world and its rulers, but to openly stand up for their actions. How should Christians react when a clear decision for or against Jesus is demanded of them? During the climax of the great battle of faith, an uncompromising decision for or against Jesus will be demanded of all Christians. With a clear decision on the inside and outside for Jesus and an open confession of faith in him, even more people are to be won for his kingdom. Why should Christians not bow down to laws that are inimical to God? If worldly ordinances and laws harm any fellow human beings and contradict the divine laws, one must disobey them if one is able to fight back. How will the Antichrist treat Christians? Satan works against Christians and believers, both under the guise of Allah through Muslims and through the Antichrist and his earthly followers under the New World Order. The fate of Christians will be difficult and sorrowful, while Satan's followers will be well off on the outside. Every belief in a god, as well as spiritual things in general, are planned to be destroyed, especially the church organizations, and what is outwardly recognizable as Christian will be persecuted. The Christian churches will be forbidden the outward practice of worship. Those who valued outward and ceremonial things will have to change their ways. 
Messengers of God and believers will be ridiculed, mocked, and slandered. Everything that is good and true will be suppressed, and everything bad and false will dominate. Good will suffer hardship in many ways. Regulations and laws will be enacted specifically against Christians. They will be deprived of rights. The law of the strongest will prevail. Christians will be deprived of everything material they require, all in an effort to destroy them. Christians will be forced into services that exceed their powers and abilities. Christians will no longer have peace. They will be constantly harassed, persecuted, harmed, and dispossessed for no reason. They will always find themselves in battle situations. Satan will influence the Antichrist and his followers in such a way that they will no longer have any inhibitions or mercy towards Christians, and they will be justified in using any means to cause Christians to turn away from faith. The thoughts and wills of Christians will be confused and manipulated by mind control to prevent contact with Jesus. Every trick, lie, and weapon in the enemy's arsenal will be ruthlessly utilized against all Christians. Through pious dissimulation of the Antichrist, many Christians will be deceived. Christians will be exposed to difficult temptations, tricking them into taking the easier way. Christians will be prevented from correctly discerning, from carrying out their plans, and from practicing works of love. Christians will be increasingly isolated, shunned, scorned, and ridiculed by their fellow human beings, who have become ever more fiendish. They will put Christians in material need to return their minds back to matter. They will be deprived of all nourishment. Only the followers of the Antichrist will be granted the right to live, and Christians are to die. Will spiritual communities form during this great battle of faith? Jesus will pave the way and bring his followers together himself. Like-minded people will find each other in Jesus' name. Love will bring them together. They will form a spiritual community, keep his commandments, lift each other up, comfort each other, share strength among themselves, stick together, work in his name, and acknowledge Jesus before the world. What commonalities will unite the various Christian spiritual groups? The various persecuted Christian communities will focus on Jesus' teaching and acknowledgement of his name as a basic principle, and thereby unite. Every denominational dispute will be buried. External ceremonial acts and customs will be rejected, and only the inner bond with Jesus Christ will be striven for. Every Christian denomination will give priority to cultivating, teaching, and practicing love. It will include all who stand for love and faith, who will acknowledge Jesus before the world and be filled with his Spirit as a result of unceasing deeds of love. Why does God allow these persecutions by Satan, the Antichrist? During the battle of faith, a clear confession for or against God, that is, Jesus, will be demanded by the Antichrist. This will decide the continued fate of the soul after its death. This decision will require a conscious confrontation with the previous traditional faith. Because of the freedom of will of Satan, of the Antichrist, but also of all Christians, everyone must, by themselves, make the decision of belonging to Satan or God, that is, Jesus. As long as the divine teaching, which testifies of God and his omnipotence, his love and wisdom, is not attacked, he will not intervene but he will if this teaching is suppressed. When does Satan exceed his authority? How does God set limits then? 
Thanks to his freedom of will, Satan, together with his helpers, can fully unfold once again. But as soon as he exceeds that limit, when he will deprive people of the freedom of will and their faith in God, that is when he seals his fate. Why will the opponents of Christ not achieve their goal? Where there is genuine faith in the divinity of Jesus and his work of redemption, the opponents will not achieve their goals. The power of faith will be demonstrated by obvious signs and miracles, which God himself will manifest for and through the believers. As such, their faith will endure the most severe tests. They will no longer disclose what they possess in faith. They will receive strength, assistance, counsel, and protection from Jesus. How long will this test of faith last? The test of faith by the Antichrist will last a full three years until the final judgment. In total, the reign of the Antichrist and the New World Order will last seven years according to various prophecies. The reign of the Antichrist will begin at the end of the Third World War and the catastrophe from the cosmos, which will put an end to the war. Ultimately, this test of faith will be put to an end by the coming of Jesus after the rapture of the last believers and by the complete destruction of the surface of the earth, as well as of all the followers of Satan still living upon it in a global inferno.